Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive of Higher Things. And joining me today is Molly Lackey. Molly, how are you today? I'm doing great, Pastor Goodman. That's good. You wrote a book, right? I did. I wrote a book. Confessing Jesus, the heart of being Lutheran. That's the name of it. And I, I got to kind of uh, skim through a, a, a published copy of it. And it's, it's awesome. Um, you, you take like the Sunday school answer that, that everybody knows is safe. And then you start asking like all of the right questions about it, because it's not just enough to say Jesus, but, but we actually get to start to dive in. Um, and I love the way you start to, to lay out the chapters, like who is Jesus and, and what did he do? And then where is Jesus now? Which actually I think is probably one of my favorite chapters because it's, it's, it's hard. How does it feel to sort of tackle something like this? I mean, I had just such a great time with it. Um, you know, I, so my background is I'm trained as a historian. I did uh, history, German and Latin in undergrad. And then I uh, did an early modern uh, European history MA at St. Louis university. And I really love that. I got to write something that I think real people can actually read for a change. Um, it was, it was so nice to, to write at a really, uh, normal person, accessible level. And I think about some stuff that's really hard and sometimes can be really hard to put into vocabulary that we feel comfortable hearing and reading and using on a day-to-day basis, but also not dumbing it down, right? We don't, we don't want to dumb down things like, um, like substitute substitutionary atonement or like the sacraments, right. Um, and the validity of the sacraments, but we, we do, we can use, uh, language that's a bit more accessible, right? These kind of these kind of like Sunday school answers, right? But sort of unpacking them and expanding them uh, so that we get the full meaning out of what what they all mean. Right. Uh, you, you talk about um, in the book uh, really deep stuff, but the language is it's it's important to have that language, especially when you you know wear one of these or you have a, a fancy bunch of letters with your your title. But you can actually talk about who your Lord is to your neighbor with, with language that other people can understand. And that's important because they by and large have the same concerns. They have the same fears. They have the same death that, that all of us do. Um, so like we, we get to sort of dive into this and say, you know, so where is Jesus today? And you, you did such a beautiful job in this that I can, I can ask you, and then I'm just going to give you a, a, a deep end of the pool. Uh, where do I find Jesus today, Molly? So, Jesus promises right at the end of Matthew that he's going to be with us always. And then he ascends. And that was always something that was so difficult for me to understand. Um, But something that I think is really neat is um, as Lutherans, we have kind of this, uh, this history of understanding the ascension, not as about like Jesus uh, going to this physical location, right. That we can access anymore. This, this really kind of Calvinist way of understanding heaven and understanding Jesus But instead, what the Ascension is telling us is that Jesus is now completely glorified. Jesus, as true God and true man, is able to to totally make good on all of his promises. And all of those promises are that he's going to be in his sacraments, that he's going to be with us in his word through absolution and in baptism and in the Lord's Supper, where he's attached his word to those physical things. And he's going to be there for us physically to forgive our sins to bring us into eternal life here and now and after we die. And it's just so incredibly comforting. And I think it's, it's a whole lot better than, than, you know, Jesus locked up in heaven. No, Jesus, Jesus conquers heaven, right? Jesus, Jesus is King of heaven so that he can come back to you on earth. Right. And, and even a Jesus who is stuck in the only, like if Jesus were still stuck in Jerusalem on earth, right. that's not going to help me. Is right. It? No, not at all. Not right. unless we can all buy plane tickets to Jerusalem. I, I mean, I, I, I guess maybe he would have to go on tour or something, Yeah, but like we, we still have, there, there are problems with this. It, right. instead, we have a Jesus who is, is anywhere you can get water. Um, yeah. And I understand why the world would struggle with that too, because it, it looks every bit as well, humble as, I don't know, Jesus did when he yeah. walked on earth. <laughs> um, I, I really sort of love your approach inside of, of, of this book uh, because it, it lets us start to tackle all of the things that, that it's not just we're struggling to explain, but I think the, the world is largely struggling to understand. Um, if if I, I hate to like just jump to the epilogue of it, um, but 
it was it was one of the the probably more profound things uh, that, that she said, you, you sort of get into awkward conversations with people. And, and as somebody who loves some awkward, I, I immediately <laughs> tuned in. Um, but, but you said not every conversation has to immediately lead to, you know, some visible result. Yeah. Um, it, it, it really stuck with me that, that, that just the, the joy that you have uh, as you get to, to find comfort in this faith without having to win an argument. Right. Yeah. I, I definitely seem to be a magnet for, um, like really hard questions about the faith and that absolutely lead nowhere. Right. I remember having a conversation. I I sort of alluded to this in the book, but I had a, like a three hour conversation with, with a friend of a friend one time. Um, and basically he was trying to get me to prove to him, um, that sin was real and that there was a problem with the universe. Um, that there was something, something was wrong that, you know, that, that, life ought to be better and sort of like, you know, this prerequisite, right. For, for, uh, everything that we believe is, is Christians. Right. Um, and it, it really went nowhere. It was a very cordial conversation. We both had a really good time talking. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it definitely did not lead to like, uh, you know, an an invitation to church and him joining me at church, just like the, the thing I talk about in the book didn't either. But um, what I think is so comforting is, is we get to, we get to have these awkward conversations. We get to sometimes maybe even say the wrong thing. Um, and we don't have to beat ourselves up about it because ultimately it isn't us who's converting people. It's the Holy Spirit who's changing hearts. And, you know, yes, the Holy Spirit does work through the words that we say, but fundamentally that, that is not the end all be all thing. That is not the determining factor um, to anybody's salvation. That's fantastic. And that's, that's so freeing that, that um, if, if we actually read the book, we find out all the things that, that Jesus is, you don't have to be the good shepherd anymore. He already yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, that, that all of these things that, that we're so convinced we need to do ourselves, Jesus has accomplished. So I guess to, to kind of wrap things up, because I know you're about to get thrown out of a room. Um, <laughs> First, uh, again, the book is Confessing Jesus, The Heart of Being a Lutheran. You can get it at cph.org. Uh, you can get it on Amazon if, if you yeah. want to go right. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell us about the book? I think that this is a really good book. Um, if, you've, if you're new to being Lutheran, if you've been Lutheran for a long time and you aren't quite sure what makes Lutherans different from other Christians, um, I also tried to, to really keep in mind, um, you know, I'm, I'm, my extended family isn't Lutheran and neither is my husband's extended family. And most of the people that we know who are Lutheran, because I'm originally from Southern California, I moved to Alabama. Neither of those are really big, uh, Lutheran parts of the country. Not the hot spots, no. no. And so I really wanted to have something that, um, we could share with our friends and our neighbors and our family members who aren't Lutheran, but who want to know better about what we believe. Um, and who, you know, maybe we want to have those conversations with, but we, we want to have them in a way that's, that's friendly, um, that, that isn't, uh, jumping down their throat or that isn't sort of using them as a foil constantly to, you know, I'm, well, I'm, I'm not a Baptist or I'm not a Catholic or whatever. If, if you're looking for something that explains what it means to be a Lutheran as a Lutheran, um, I think this is a really good book for that. I would agree. It's, it's actually one of the, the great things that the, the new generation of Lutherans are, are really, it's not just what we're not, it's who we are. Yeah. Uh, we're the ones who have, well, like you said, the most Jesus. Yeah. Um, fantastic. <laughs> um, I, I would definitely recommend you pick this book up. Molly, thank you so much for writing. Thanks for joining the Drive to School podcast. Thanks for doing all the higher things stuff that you've done over the years. Like you, you've, you've sort of gone through the ranks, haven't you? Yeah, I've I've written for the uh, magazine a, a time or two. Uh, I was a CCV three times, uh, 2016 in Nashville, 2017 in Valparaiso, and 2018 in Kansas City. So I think I managed to pick two of the ones that had the most walking, if anybody remembers those ones. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Molly, uh, I'd love to have you back sometime. We'll talk more Jesus, but uh, thank you so much for, for being with us and sharing the, the stuff that you're up to. Thanks so much for having me. And, and next time I'll, I'll remember what the library's hours are and, and not you know, get kicked out. It's, 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 uh, it's part of, it's not a podcast unless somebody gets kicked out of the library. Okay. <laughs>